what is the oort cloud okay a why does it exist b how big is it c does it exist around every solar system and d could it have helped in evolving life in our solar system so let me give you a visual exam visual idea of what the oort cloud is let me share an image okay this is a rough model of the solar system so here if you can see my mouse pointer that's the sun here is the earth so this distance between the sun and the earth is called one astronomical unit so this is this graph is on the logarithmic scale so this is one astronomical unit this is another 10 astronomical units 10 so this is the distance between the uh, the sun and the set in and saturn this is a hundred astronomical units that's where the voyager one spacecraft is roughly around right now so that is basically where the solar system ends that's the beginning of interstellar space and the oort cloud is a hypothetical spherical cloud of basically uh, icy objects that are the nuclei of future comets so that is what the oort cloud is it is an enormous cloud let me show you a different image okay so let's take a look at this so if you look at this image here the red orbit here is that of mars the green one is earth this diffuse orbit over here is the asteroid belt and the orange orbit here is the orbit of jupiter if you look at it here it's very small the orbit of jupiter and the purple one is the orbit of pluto and you have the caper belt over here and this red dot is the minor planet called sedna which is currently around 90 astronomical units from the sun one astronomical unit is the earth sun distance here you have the orbit of sedna which is an enormously elongated orbit yeah so it tells you how small the orbit of pluto is in comparison let me remove that right so that gives, gives you an idea of the orbit of sedna and this is the orbit of sedna in comparison with the oort cloud so that gives you an idea of how large the oort cloud is and how far away it is from us it's essentially in interstellar space but it is still under the influence of the sun's gravity it's an enormous cloud hypothetical enormous cloud of cometary uh, nuclei the nuclei of comets now what happens is that if this oort cloud does exist and there is a good chance that it does exist so if this oort cloud does exist then it is only loosely influenced by the sun's gravity because it is so far away from the sun it's essentially in interstellar space and it is also affected by the gravitational attraction of nearby stars passing stars and also the gravitational attraction of the milky way itself and therefore you see that from time to time various cometary nuclei get dislodged from their orbits and the, some of them are sent tumbling towards the sun and that's what eventually becomes comets so this is basically a hypothetical reservoir of comets so it's almost halfway to the nearest star that's what the oort cloud is so it's hypothetical but there's a very good chance that it does exist and it exists because of the way the the early solar system formed the solar system formed from a primordial cloud of gas that was left behind from the death of another star so the sol solar system is a reincarnation of a previous solar system and the material that was left behind after the circumstellar disk coalesced into the sun and the planets that became the oort cloud initially it was supposed to be it is believed that it was much closer to the sun and eventually it drifted out further be further away from the solar system from the sun because of the gravitational interactions of the gas giant planets okay so it's quite far now it's in interstellar space it's very very large but it's very diffuse does it exist around every solar system there's a good chance that it exists around many uh, stellar systems uh, we haven't really seen because it's it's such a small diffuse it's not small it's very large but it's very diffuse and the uh, cometary nuclei therein are very very small so it's almost impossible to detect uh, around other stars and even around our own solar system which is why it's still hypothetical but 
if it exists around our solar system, there's a good chance it exists around other solar systems as well. Could it have helped in evolving life in our solar system? Well, we spoke about panspermia, this theory that uh, micros microscopic life exists across the galaxy on dust grains and comets and asteroids, etc. So if some of these uh, cometary nuclei did contain the seeds of life, then it could have seeded life on the Earth in the very early solar system when the Earth was under intense bombardment from comets and asteroids. So there is a possibility that it may have played a role in the uh, seeding of life in the early Earth.